Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Only Stupid Answers. This is the show where we answer your questions about movies, TV shows, comic books, and what you should be watching. Gosh dang it. Roxy mm. suggested this one with me, as always. Roxy Stryer. Hi, Roxy. Yeah. Hi, DJ. It's because I need things to look forward to because, boy, oh, boy, are things bleak yeah. outside of TV land, and I'm like, what is good in the world? Yes, please give me things to watch and entertain me. And so we're going to be talking about the stuff you should be keeping up with. Um, up through the spring, we didn't want to get too ambitious because the farther you get out, I always make, at the beginning of every year, I make like a, a like, okay, here are my, here are the da 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 does, right? The things we should be looking out for. And you get too far out, it gets a little loosey-goosey and stuff gets moved around. So it's better not to bank on that stuff. So we're just going to go through spring. But a little business up top, of course, uh, if you want to listen to this episode ad-free early uh, and watch it live and be in the chat like our special friends, Kayla Marie, Mike Choice, John Libra, and the rest, you can do that over at patreon.com slash only stupid answers. We also have exclusive shows like Spider-Versity and what we're into. Oh my goodness. Also, if you go to, if you look in the description uh, or if you go to hellbentcomicbook.com, you can check out my new comic, Hellbent Volume 3. This is the third and final volume of the Hellbent Saga. We are funded. We've reached our second stretch goal. We're working on that third stretch goal, which is updated cover stock. If you're watching the video of this, I got volume two over here. And listen, it's a video. You can't feel it. But let me tell you, if you could feel it, you'd feel how silky smooth this cover is. And that costs money, baby. So uh, we're trying to make these comics as good as possible. So if you want to go over to hellbentcomicbook.com and help us achieve that. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. It's a really good story, I think. And if you haven't uh, checked it out so far, you're in luck. You get all three volumes in one fell swoop, all 136 pages uh, and more. You're not behind. It's yeah. great. You can just catch up immediately. You're right on time. We love it. This isn't like the MCU where you need to watch 20 billion movies to catch up. It's only three volumes. Um, yeah, so that's the, listen, that's the deal. And speaking of the MCU... Let's get into some newsy news talk. I didn't know if we were going to have news this week because we've got plenty to talk about. But yesterday, uh, the news dropped that uh, Stephen Yoon uh, from The Walking Dead and the Invincible animated series and Minari. And that one movie that I loved so much. Uh huh. And, and Burning. And he's really good in that, too. I believe it's, it's uh, Burning. I'm getting that correct. I don't um, know. But Minari was so good. I feel like that movie came and went. And I wish it didn't go because so good. Because we want it give us give us more yeah he's in burning burning he's very 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 good in burning he's a, he listen he's a good boy he's a yeah. good talented boy uh, and he's gonna be in thunderbolts and of course everybody's speculating of who he could be in the thunderbolts movie for those that are not uh, caught up thunderbolts is the kind of the super villain team uh in uh, uh, the Marvel Universe. Um, in the movie we've got Florence Pugh returning as the new Black Widow. Is she there are we is she Black Widow? Are we yeah have we officially given her the title of black is she black widow now like as opposed to calling her yelena yeah i still call her yelena i don't know what i think she's black widow yeah i think what throws me off is typically when we see her she's wearing a white uniform and so that throws uh oh so is this off. a black canary white canary situation i she's don't know i don't know if we've officially designated her with a title uh but yelena uh winter soldier all those all those folks so now it is our turn to speculate wildly as to who Steven Yoon could be in this movie. <laughs> I'm I'm excited to see like I felt like during The Walking Dead, as you know, DJ, mm -hmm. I watched I, I only haven't seen the last three episodes of The Walking Dead. Okay. And, but and you're specifically uh, holding on to those because you're a crazy person. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You nailed it. Mm -hmm. Um I love the show. Yeah. And actually, we can get more into this when we talk about The Last of Us, um, which I love mm -hmm. and is obviously significantly better in many aspects. However, mm -hmm. I feel like the parts, <laughs> of the, the parts of The Walking Dead that people ripped, yeah. that they're praising with The Last of Us, unfair. Okay. Give unfair. Me, give, you got to give me an example. You got to give me an example. Just like... The world building or one off episodes. Yeah. The people for The Walking Dead, they'd be like, this has nothing to do with the rest of the plot. Nothing. 
Oh, well, I'll, like, get, I'll tell you this, Roxy. I have seen some of that discourse with The Last of Us. Uh, but the majority the of people fillers the majority, get thrown around, and it's like I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking yep. about. <laughs> but the majority of the people have been like, "Oh, that was the most beautiful episode of all time," or yeah. like with yeah. Melanie Linsky's character, like I'm glad that they added this new character. Yeah. But when they do that for The Walking Dead, they're like, "There's so many characters." Whatever. It's always it's never going to be perfect. But yeah. I'm just like. The Walking Dead is a better show yeah. and, and remained a better show than people gave it credit for. That's not the purpose of this conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah. but just, I'm on my Walking Dead. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. <laughs> on my Walking Dead soapbox yeah. till I be sleeping dead. Mm -hmm. Like, just, I love that show. Um, but anyway, Steven Yoon is arguably the best part of The Walking Dead ever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, he, mm -hmm. he, his character, but also his performance... Um, and like I said, I love Minari too. So he's one of those names where like, if you're going to add him to something, I'm like, I'm more interested in that thing than I was previously, period. Yeah. No matter who he's playing. Thunderbolts, as you've been speaking about for years, and I've been talking about for years, is a property that like, I don't really care much about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But so I'd be really curious from you what you, not just who you think, but what you, who you hope. To see Steven you know that's a good i like that i like that phrasing i like the the phrasing of it it's interesting because i've seen some speculation online um there's been rumors that um the century will be a part of the movie and so people have been like oh maybe it'll be the century which listen he is talented enough to pay the play the century for those that don't know the century is one of the many superman analogs in the mcu Slight spoilers for the character, the hook with him, one of the hooks with him, he's actually kind of a complicated character, is that his arch nemesis is also him. Like there's like a Cthulhu like entity that exists in him and the more powerful he gets as a hero, the more powerful the evil entity that is also connected to him gets. And so Does it look like him? Like no, is it like a it twin? It looks like sister? a giant, uh, the comics I read, it looks like a giant dark squid monster. Um, and so if Sentry is in the movie, there's a good chance Sentry is also the villain of the movie, and uh, but and so I think there's also been rumors that Ryan Gosling might play the character, which I also feel like is a stretch. However, if you're going to subvert the Superman formula, I feel like a uh, actor like Ryan Gosling is a better choice than Steven Yeun. Not that he couldn't play the character. The other one I've seen people say is him playing Amadeus Cho, who is. Um, uh, kind of uh, was a sidekick for the Hulk and Hercules for a long time and was a version of the Hulk for a while. Uh, and again, Steven Yeun would be great as anything, so he'd be great as that. However, traditionally in the comics, the Amadeus Cho is a teenager. And I'd like, we did that with uh, Robbie Ray as Ghost Rider, where it's like, he's a teenager in the comics, but now he's 30 in our show. And it's like, well, don't, don't do that. Um, I am worried, Roxy, that this might you don't be know what suffering is until you've watched Gotham and you see that we did that with Poison Ivy three no, but times. Like, Poison show. Ivy literally is a child and an adult, but that's different. <laughs> that's the, they did different things with that one. We don't we need to get into that. Watched it all the way through, did they? Sorry, continue. Uh, okay, so um, I'm worried that this is going to be like I remember when like William Jackson Harper was announced to be in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Everybody's like, "Who is he?" And the answer was just some dude. And I'm so I'm worried that we're gonna we're getting looped into this with Steven Yoon because he's so great. They're like, he's got to be somebody important. And maybe he's not. Maybe he's just a dude in the movie. <laughs> um, yeah. To your yeah, point. Yeah, because he's not that, he's not at Ryan Gosling level star where if you get him, it's like, you know he's going to be something. Well, and um, um, and I know um, uh, Alden Ehrenreich, who you all know I'm actually a really big fan of from Hail Caesar, and I thought he was really good in Solo. He's in Iron... And Iron Cocaine Bear. Uh, is he good in co Cape Cocaine Bear? Oh, yeah. If you guys haven't seen Hail Caesar, he's really fucking good in Hail Caesar. Anyway, um, uh, he's I think he's just some dude in Ironheart. And it's like, no, but he's good. Like, don't just have him be a dude. Like, have him be somebody that matters. Anyway, whatever. That's the fanboy in me. Um, so the Thunderbolts in the comics is a hook that you can't really do in the MCU. Uh, because the hook is they announced this team. It was, this is coming out of an event saga. The Avengers are off the table after the event and there's supposed to be this new superhero team full of new characters. And the reveal at the end of the first issue is that they're actually not new characters. They're actually like C-list villains that are rebranding themselves as heroes, which you cool. can't do in the MCU for a couple reasons. One, uh, yeah. most of their villains are dead. And two, just by casting 
the same people, you know who would, you know what I mean? Like you can't, it's harder to make that reveal happen. That's kind of a reveal that is unique to the comics. That said, I'd like to see, obviously we're pulling a bunch of like um, lesser knowns, like uh, Red Guardian's coming back, Ghost is coming back, uh, Taskmaster's coming back. It would be cool to see, even though those characters haven't been previously established, She-Hulk did a very good job of like kind of implying that like there's a larger superhuman universe that we may not have seen. And so one of my favorite uh, Thunderbolts characters is Mach 1. Uh, and he's gotten upgrades over the years like Mach 2, Mach 3, uh, Mach 4. And if Roxy were to ask me right now, TJ, why do you like the Mach characters? It's exactly the words that were coming out of my mouth, DJ. Uh, Because he looks cool. That's it. I think he looks cool. I think his costume looks cool. Um, uh, He's. I think originally he's one of the Beatles uh, that becomes mock whatever. It be listen. That'd be cool to have Stephen Yoon be that. Again, there's no uh, previously. It also would have been cool. And there's a lot of hoops that they'd have to jump through, especially now to make this happen. But have Michael Keaton's Vulture be on the team and have him be like a rebranded as like a heroic character that's be very much in the spirit of thunderbolts but then they'd have to like there's the sony of it all and i guess now vultures in another universe but whatever if it was dj's pick have him be have steven Yeun be one of the mock whatevers uh that's mock one mock two mock three i don't give a shit have him be one of those so as i go to thunderbolts on imdb mm-hmm. first of all i'm reminded that harrison ford uh has just like taken over the television space yeah which is just super duper wild like watching him this year in 1923 yeah um and simultaneously watching him in shrinking mm-hmm. i'm just like wow he is working like i kind of want him to take a little bit of a breather yeah like, listen dude you're over 80 fucking calm down <laughs> like holy shit um but the other thing that i noticed is that so the people announced or the people listed on here harrison ford florence Pugh. yeah um uh, like you talked about Ghost, uh, Julia Lee dreyfus Sebastian Stan, Olga, um, David Harbour, Wyatt Russell, Stephen Yoon. And then the last person listed on here who I didn't know was announced is the girl from The Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I that. thought was so fucking good. Yeah. Um, which I'm stoked about. I don't know uh, how to pronounce her name. Ao um, Edabiri, maybe? That sounds about right. She's so good in that show. Yep. Any any quick thoughts on who she could possibly be? I think there's only two without a character listed. Yeah, I think she's probably just going to be a person. Like again, I, I actually honestly kind of think Stephen Yu's just going to be like a per. He's going to be Harrison Ford's right hand dude or something. You know what I mean? Like something that's just kind of normal. Um, yeah. If she was a Thunderbolts character, I don't think we've cast Songbird yet. I'd like to see some of the traditional thunderbolts characters show up even though we haven't really established them previously uh which is kind of a bummer i feel like the mcu could have done that but um uh i think songbird is cool um that would be my vote that would be my vote on that so, I take your vote as law also the other thing i have to acknowledge is as cool as it would be to have them these characters be like characters from the comics uh the team is all you already read off the names the team's already pretty chunky we can't really yeah. fit if we're going to give people breathing room and the thunderbolts isn't the suicide squad where like like when james gunn announced the suicide squad it's like here's two dozen people and you're like well the two-thirds of those are going to be dead by the end of the movie uh that's not really thunderbolts jam um so but the point is they're kind of like hitting the limits of uh how many people they can fit on the team so we is thunderbolts uh, does it have a more comedic tone? Not traditionally. The reason I ask is because I'm looking also the director listed for Thunderbolts is Jake Schreier. Yeah. Who I'm looking at his IMDb and he did do the movie Paper Towns, which I know a lot of people did not love. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's a particular. I think it's like a dramedy more. Yeah. But I'm looking at like most of the shows that he's worked on mm-hmm. have been like he worked on Dave. He yeah. worked on kidding. Um, he worked on the Benny Blanco stuff, like all very humorous. He worked on Shameless. Yeah. So I'm curious about. Uh, I mean, his maybe that's show. was his pitch. Maybe they're trying to get it closer to the Suicide Squad. Um, but traditionally, no. Traditionally, uh, I, at least the ones I read were kind of darker in tone. Um, Did you ever see Robot and Frank? No. 
Apparently he directed that. I've never heard of this movie, but it stars Susan Sarandon, Liv Tyler, uh, Peter Scar- uh, Sarsgaard. Uh, it's normally, Frank based off what you would be telling me, Roxy, I'd get very worried. But James I also Tom. know that sometimes the Marvel machine is strong. It al- allows directors that might not traditionally be a good fit for this material to excel. Like, uh, for example, I give you the Russo Brothers movies that are in the MCU and then the Russo Brothers movies that are not in the MCU. Yeah, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, we'll see. But I hope I like the Thunderbolts. I The one the actors we've announced so far, I really like. So I'm hoping for good things. Now, this movie actually looks very interesting. Robot and Frank. Let's, might listen, need to check we out. need to have a movie night of, with <laughs> Robot and Frank. All right. Speaking of watching things. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sure. Roxy, you sent me... Did you already have this list ready to go? No. Okay. I was going to say, I was like, man, if Roxy did all this work, I'm going to feel bad. <laughs> no, no, I didn't have it ready to go. I did the work because I was like, I'm going to... I think I'm going to show him that yeah. there's more than he's realizing right yeah. now. You saw but, me. You did good. <laughs> uh, also, it's always good to have because I need to know what's up and coming and stuff. But it, it, it was less of a pitch and more of a... Seriously, DJ, like things have been so bleak. Mm-hmm. that like there it is so important to remind us things that we like that are going to be happening and obviously that doesn't always have to just be in movies and tv yeah. it can be in comic books and music but it can also be in your own personal life but like i really like looking forward right now to remind myself there is a forward yes um, yes yeah, good which is difficult to do so mm-hmm. yeah there's i and also i think what's interesting about this too is Spring season doesn't really exist. Like we've made up our own time periods now. Mm-hmm. Like, technically, winter goes through March, but movies and TV don't believe that. And yeah. technically, summer starts in April. Yeah, like or not technically, it's not, summer actually starts in June. But movies and TV believe it starts in April. So yeah. like, yeah, it's just kind of talking about the next couple of months. Yeah, exactly. We're just looking ahead a little bit. Um, we're going to start with TV shows. Yeah, uh, and some of this stuff actually just literally just dropped, and we're going to be talking about and what we're into. So if you're not a patron, go over to patreoncom answers if you want to hear our thoughts on Bel Air and Outer Banks. Uh, Bel Air season two starts yesterday, as of this recording. Um, uh, also, j- and I'll just say because we're going to talk about and what we're into. Good, it's still good. I DJ like it. Good. <laughs> Super good. Yeah. So happy this show is not a one sit down binge. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Um, Outer Banks. We're going to okay, talk okay, about so, wh- what is, wait, where did this show come yeah. from, Roxy? Because it's so, already got three seasons and I didn't know about it. <laughs> so, um, DJ, mm-hmm. I don't know how to say this nicely, so I'll just say it. Yeah. You're aging myself, yourself, my dude. Like, you can't not yes. know about Outer Banks and be cool with the kids. Yeah. I Outer am. Banks, <laughs> it's. It's the equivalent, I find, that Outer Banks is the equivalent to the kids now as the OC was for, like, our gen or Gossip Girl for a little older. Like, this is the it show Mm -hmm. for the high schoolers. Um, I could phrase that cooler. But it's, like, a coming-of-age drama, um, but has a little more, like, crime elements to it. Uh, will they, won't they, Classic. high schoolers that live in Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're bl- split up into two groups, the Pogues and the, oh, it's bad. I forget the other name, uh, whatever. Yeah. The rich kids and the poor kids, Got it. essentially. Um, and they hate each other. And they're some one, girl from the rich kids falls in love with boy from the poor kids. Ooh, that's never and- happened before. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Totally. It's nothing you've never seen before. However, it's really good. Mm-hmm. They do a great job with the show. Uh, I it's It's been three seasons. They did a big, big... The reason people are hearing a lot about it now is that in LA, there was like this big... I almost want to say camp mm-hmm. experience that they invited like a thousand influencers to. Oh, wow. And it was like a whole fucking to-do with a concert, with big shows, and like it was a whole thing. See, I um, figured it was because Madeline Klein, who was on this show, yes, uh, right, that's yes, correct, yes. Uh, was also in uh, the new Knives Out movie, and so they're like, okay, the the, the DJs of the world will be aware of who this person is now. <laughs> mm, interesting. Yeah, I, I think that this show is super duper not for you. Oh, shocked! Um, I'm shocked. But if you are somebody who lo- like, 
even if you're my age and you love the shows that we grew up on yeah. that were like this, I think it's definitely worth your time. It's the the Madeline Klein and the main guy from the show. Mm-hmm. The character's name is John B. Um, I think are, we're going to be seeing for like years and years. A bunch of them, I think we're going to be seeing for years. They are like, they're the it kids right now. Well, and listen, sure. it will never go out of style to get, based on the images I've seen, uh, to get the hottest young actors and actresses around right. uh, on your screen wearing as little clothes as possible. That will always be, you'll always have a hit on your hand with that one. Um, totally, totally. They they know exactly what they're doing with this. And like the kids are obsessed. Good, good for them. Uh, so moving over to something uh, DJ knows about and is a fan of is Party Down season three. Here's my problem with Party Down coming back, Roxy. Is okay. I need to get stars, <laughs> um, but otherwise ha- very happy. So, I totally hear you. Let me tell you something mm-hmm. that you might not know about your girl rocks. Yeah, never seen Party Down. It's always been on my list. It's so good. And so I started it this week. It's so good. <laughs> I was super unaware of all the celebs that came from Party Down. Yes. As I'm watching it, I'm like, what? Yeah. Huge. That's where you're from? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, this is like one of my biggest blind spots in TV. Um, and I'm stoked that it's coming back. So it's giving me a reason to binge it now. And it's only two seasons previously. So I feel yeah. like I'll be able to go through it quickly. The stars part is about. Yeah, just c- listen, good for them. They need this stuff. But um, also bummed that Lizzie Kaplan's not coming back for this season, um, which is a bummer. Uh, she's in Fleischman is in trouble, I think. Uh, yeah, she was in Fleischman is in trouble. Um, oh, I wonder if they're doing a season two of that. Uh, just because uh, I it, it, the reason given was scheduling difficulties, but she was such a key part of the original show that it's bummer that she's not getting back. However, there were some cast members that were around for season one that weren't around for season two, but now they're both in for season three. So it'll be cool to see those characters interact. Whatever. Well, I like cool. the show. I'm excited to see. I'm, I will. I like the show enough that I will get stars just to watch this show. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Cool. So I'm excited to binge. Um, a show that everybody that listens to this show, I assume, is watching is uh, – oh, but Leonard Kim coming in to help us out with um, Outer Banks. The Pogues and the Kooks. The cool. Kooks, yeah. Cool. Maybe that's why I block it out. It's just like I understand that that's not a slur. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. Okay, uh, The Mandalorian. I don't know if we need to spend a lot of time with this. It's coming out soon. We're going to cover it on the show. Y'all are going to watch it. I don't know. Are you excited for Mandalorian Season 3, Roxy? Yeah, I'm actually stoked for this. And you and I always seem to have the opposite Star Wars opinions. Mm-hmm. So I have a feeling that I'm going to really like Mando Season 3, and you are not. I liked uh bad batch season two um uh uh we'll see i hope that two to three episodes of this season are uh, abandon whatever story it's telling and dedicate dedicate themselves to boba fett for seemingly no reason uh that's what i hope for this season um oh roxy i didn't know this was coming back for season two sex life this was a show i recall you having mixed feelings on uh so for anybody who's like what sex life um, this was the show with the 14 inch penis that went around the internet. Okay. Um, All right. Sorry. 14 inch flaccid penis. That, right. that was the All one right. thing that came from this show that like actually stood the test of time. Yeah. 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 Um, I really didn't love this show mm-hmm. and I, it was definitely made for people like me. Yeah. But I have been seeing so much buzz on the internet of people being like, I can't believe sex life is coming back. I'm so stoked. And I'm like, I guess I'll watch. Yeah. I just, sometimes it's, I I don't have a hard time watching shows with characters that we're supposed to hate. Like it's always sunny in Philadelphia or Seinfeld or Mm -hmm. any of the shows where it's like this show knows these characters you don't like. Yeah. The problem with this show inherently is that the show wants you to like these characters, Yeah. but they are not likable based on their life choices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're like, I don't like you. And this show is not aware of that. Yeah. So I'm curious how they adjust for season two. That's tricky. That's a tricky balancing act. Um, now a show I've been actually hearing a lot about weirdly is Daisy Jones and the Six. Uh, I am aware. Uh, the synopsis is following the rise of rock band Daisy Jones and the Six through the 70s LA music scene on their quest for worldwide icon status. I am aware that this is based on a book. 
I'm yeah. also aware that people that have read the book are like, well, this should probably be a movie uh, and not instead of a show. Um, oh, what do you think about this, Roxy? I'm excited for this, actually, because, you know, rock and roll is my jam. Yes. I know that Davy Jones and the Six is based on a book, which they have said is loosely based on Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac, which yeah. is like my total jam. And if you've seen uh, the trailer, you're like, yeah, that tracks. I see yeah, it. totally. <laughs> uh, I I remember when do you remember that show vinyl that came out? Yeah, uh, that was supposed to be the Martin Scorsese's next HBO jam after Boardwalk. Boardwalk um, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm so excited for music and whatever. And then that show totally was just like a meh for me. Okay. So I'm like, I think that this show is going to be good, but could totally be a meh. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, next up, we got the Oscars. The, they're the Oscars. I don't know if we need to spend more time on that, except uh, give me more slaps. I know they've got a crisis team ready. I don't want it. Give me all the slaps. Um, that's about what I'm rooting for in the Oscars uh, this year. Uh, let's go on to uh, March 15th. We've got Ted Lasso season three coming to Apple TV Plus. It's like they knew, Roxy. We've got a few Apple TV Pluses, and it's like they knew DJ's getting ready to cancel a subscription. He's like, there's been there's been a fallow period of watching stuff on Apple TV Plus. Maybe I can take a break. And they're like, ah, ah here's all the stuff you like, sons of bitches. <laughs> I tell you, I don't even really fully understand how I have Apple TV Plus or where it's coming from. Do you not see it on like your bill or anything? Like, I think it was because when I first got it, they had sent me that for the promo for Ted Lasso or, or whatever, or for Mythic Quest. Yeah. They sent me that Apple TV with a free year of Apple TV. And then they forgot to turn it off. And then I bought an iPhone. Uh huh. And I think they gave me. A free six months of Apple TV. Yeah, I got a something free, like that. three. I got a free three months for after I got my new phone. Could have been that. So I, I don't even know really how I have it. I just know that I do. I'm not questioning things right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I get these charges to my iPhone all the time, nine ninety nine. But I think it's for storage. I don't know. I really, am, I, I'm not sure about the whole situation. I, listen, the person in me that does budgets. I wants to highly recommend maybe look into it maybe maybe yeah, see totally. where the charges are coming from <laughs> totally totally um but that the i'm not with you yeah. in the sense that apple tv is not cancelable for me yeah because i watch so much stuff on there yeah i guess it's not so much stuff as much as it's constantly something yeah like mythic quest morning show Ted Lasso, Shrinking, um, which I'm loving right now. Yeah, I need to check out Shrinking. I want to check out Pachinko. Um, there's a new show that they came out with starring. Oh, why did it, why does his name leave my brain? The guy from Sons of Anarchy. Um, oh, wow, uh, uh, Jax Teller. As yeah. you said that, I can't think of what his yeah, name. Yeah, his name just left me. Whatever. And I actually think he's a really good actor. I think like he, uh, Lost City Z. They'll tell us in the chat. Please tell us in the Please chat. Please tell us in the chat. Anyway, whatever. I want to check it out. Um, and then Severance. Good I didn't even yeah. name Severance. No. Severance. Oh but my God. listen, Roxy, uh, Mythic Quest isn't on right now. Severance isn't on right now. And so I was like, the, the shows I was Shrinking watching. Is on. I Shrinking know, is on. I know. I know, but it's from the guy that made Ted Lasso. So I decided I was going to watch it with my wife. And I have we haven't had time to sit down and check it out yet. And so, point is, I was get, oh, they're also coming out with a new show with Billy Crudup. Um, uh, that's kind of oh wow, like that's a, a lot of Billy Crudup on Apple TV. Yeah, and so, and I've I've wanted to, the the pitch for it sounded anyway. Whatever, we're getting off track. Point is, but Ted Lasso's coming back. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is like the most feel good show. So I'm stoked. This is good timing for Ted Lasso. Yeah. Uh, I didn't love season two as much as I love season one. I know some people loved it more. Mm -hmm. They specifically what they did with Nate's character. I was kind of like, what are we going to do here? Yeah. But I still like, couldn't use this more right now. Like yeah. I just need that hopeful show, you know, believe hit the sign. Yep. Give me more Ted Lasso. It will be interesting to also see what this is like, because we know that this one was probably filmed amidst major drama for Jason Sudeikis' life. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I am curious about this, but really excited for season three. I think this will cement how people view this show if they really look at this as like one of the greats. Yeah. If they can pull out a great season here. Because I think this is, this is they've talked about this being the final season 
uh, although I've recently heard rumors that they might go on for four. I'm sure it's one of those that the creators are like, no, we had a three season plan and Apple TV was like, but do you want 10 more seasons? <laughs> do you want, let's yeah. keep this going until it, the uh, people stop watching it. Um, totally. so we will see, we're running a little type on time. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to succession season yeah, this four. Is I should, mean, Succession's as big as it gets. Should I watch this show, Roxy? They just announced that four is going to be the final season. Oh. So I feel like they've got a definitive plan. Succession is the best written show on television. All right, all it right, might be right. just the best show on television. It sucks that the best show on television is like a show about all white rich people. Mm -hmm. um, but it is. Yeah. It's just so good. Yeah. And and it's yeah, it's unbelievable. I think if just for the writing alone, you'll be like, oh yeah, must see. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Uh, we also got Yellow Jackets uh, coming to Showtime, and let me tell you something about. We got season two. This is uh, March twenty sixth. I should be giving y'all uh, uh, when they're coming out. That's the point of this. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, uh, and uh, so I've heard nothing but good things about Yellow Jackets season one. Also, this is so up your alley, DJ. You didn't watch this? I didn't watch it because Showtime. But here's the other thing I discovered, Roxy. All the A24 movies seem to be on Showtime. Ooh, and interesting. That's also, oh. that makes me, makes it tempting. You know what I mean? Uh, also on, uh, I can't think of what else is on Showtime right now. I don't now. think anything else. <laughs> I don't think that, I think there's a reason you can't think of anything else. Yellow Jackets is fucking great. Yeah. It, this is, this show has you written all over it. It's excellent. Um, there's a reason that it was nominated in its pilot season. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. just really, really good. And it's the, like, it's not a horror show, but it is for, for the horror fans. Yeah. This is the TV show for them. Um, going over to FX on Hulu, April 5th, we got Dave season three. Um, listen, you got me on the show. I enjoy it. However, I would have been okay with the way season two ended. I was like, this, this feels kind of definitive. This feels like the story you set out to tell. So I'm interested to see what they do for season three. This could be a tricky yeah. season for them. So definitely could be really curious also, but in Dave, I trust it's like at this point, Dave and Rami go tit for tat for me on like two of the greatest cringe shows ever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm stoked that Dave is coming back. It's been a long time. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate it if Rami lightened up next season a little bit. Would you hate it if there was a Dave Rami crossover? No, I'd love it. That'd be great. They'd be the worst together. They'd be they'd do the most awful things. <laughs> they amazing. Uh, they are probably of the characters on TV. They make probably the worst decisions. Rami yes. definitely. Rami just can't seem to make a good call ever. Uh, poor Rami. Oh, okay, so here's one that I, I knew most of these shows were coming back. Here's one that I thought we were one and done. And I'm very excited to see it return, return. April 7th, Apple TV Plus. Those sons of bitches, they got me back. Uh, Schmigadoon. And it looks like, I saw the first episode, it's called Schmicago. Are we doing Are we doing like a different thing this season? I don't know. I, w I wonder if new people are just wandering into Schmigadoon or we go to a new location. Um, I like essentially bullied you into watching this but show. But it's so good. It was so good. It was such a good, I appreciate it. It was, it was very well-liked and loved in the Woldridge household. I, I think it's weird that it's getting a second season though, because like you watched it, mm -hmm. I watched it. Mm -hmm. That's about it. We I mean, like, <laughs> like I never talk to people who watched this show. And also not for nothing for, if you haven't watched it, it can't possibly be a cheap show to produce. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's got a lot of stars it's in it too. It's got a lot of stars. And every time uh, my wife has started getting me to watch uh, crazy ex-girlfriend and it's just every time, which is also a musical show. And it's just the concept of writing multiple original songs per episode of TV uh, it seems incredibly daunting to me. And and like musical numbers, which are like like choreographing an action sequence, there's just a lot of levels to it. It just seems really complicated and expensive to me. Um, so not only totally. that there are a lot of stars, but it's just the, the nature of the show, the production value is really good, whatever. Who gives the a rehearsal shit? rehearsal time, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited it's coming back. <laughs> totally. Uh, it's, uh, we'll see how it does. I feel like how they're going to have to do some weird things to top season one, but I'm going to try to get more people to watch season one in preparation for this. Please. And thank you. Also on Apple TV plus, wow, they're really coming in hard is the after party. Did I ever get you to watch this? Uh, no. Um, and also, um, why am I blanking on, man, I just bad at names today. 
Um, this was the Who Done It. Yeah, the lead lady in After Party is Tiffany Haddish, and she's had a little bit of drama recently that's made me less interested in checking out the After Party. Totally, totally. Uh, I like the show a lot. I am interested to see what a season two is. I, when I watched the first season, I thought that that would be a one and done for yeah. sure. So I get how they could spin it off, um, but I don't know that this has legs for like three, four, five, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'll it's interesting, it it's interesting uh, that nature of it, because we're both watching Poker Face, and that is very, th that the first episode very clearly sets up like, hey, here's the formula that we're going to be doing every episode until you stop right. watching. This this type of show could go on till the heat death of the universe. Um, and shows like, obviously I haven't seen After Party, but the way you talk about it, I think of uh, Only Murders in the Building, Schmigadoon. Um, I'm very excited that they're getting more seasons, but it doesn't feel like they're built for it in the same way. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, see, it feels like money grabs in some sense, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, last on our TV, the TV list you sent me, May 4th, Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story. Is this, are we, how many seasons of Bridgerton do we have? Two? Yeah. So now we're doing, is this in, three is coming out. Okay. I, I don't, so this isn't instead I'm, of three, this is, hey, this, this show makes us money. Let's do as much of it as possible. I, th I believe so, but actually I'm not fully sure. And when I saw this, I was like, what is happening here? Like, so Bridgerton, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know that like every it's based on books and every year it's like a different, every season's a different main love person who came from the previous season, but they focus on a new person. Yeah. So I think that this is like Queen Charlotte is coming from the Bridgerton uh, universe, but I don't, yeah, but I think it's a, it's, it's a, a spin off. It's a flashback totally. based on the little bit I saw. It's a flash. It's following the queen and the main Bridgerton thing when she was a teen. So it, I think that I don't know when Bridgerton's going to be, but Bridgerton season three, I think, is still like been in main production. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to check it out because I like Bridgerton. It's hot and heavy. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kool Aid Man. Um, let's go over to movies. This is my world more. Um, uh, coming the soonest, will definitely be coming on this show, is Creed 3. Some of our friends, Rox, you haven't seen it yet, right? No. Some of our friends have, and it's been very positive. I've heard very good things. Yes. I'm excited I'm for stoked. it. I'm stoked. I, of all franchises, Rocky is one of my favorite. It's a good I one. consider Creed part of the Rocky franchise. Yeah, I don't. I is. know some people don't. No, I mean, uh, sure. It is, I mean, it, if Rocky's in it, the first it, two it, movies, I mean, <laughs> to me, it's that it's all the Creed is the Rocky franchise, not the Creed franchise, the Rocky franchise. Mm -hmm. And I love the two main actors in this movie. I love this franchise. I, in general, love fighting movies. Yeah. Um, so I just feel like. I'm stoked on this. The only hesitancy is obviously I hate the sly of it all. Yeah, because uh, uh, the the I, I was a I was a little confused at first. My understanding now is less issues with uh, Sylvester Stallone and Michael B. Jordan or Ryan Coogler, any of that camp, and more of the original producers, right? Of the movie. Do we think? Do we know? Have we confirmed? Is he just not in it? Are they going to say yeah, he's that's... dead? Is what is are, is there an explanation why he's not around? Uh, he's not in the movie, supposedly. Yeah. I think there's no way they kill him. That would be crazy. Mm. We'll see. I mean, you'd get a lot of dramatic mileage out of it. You'd get a lot. Yeah, but then a... what about the? You don't think there's gonna be a Creed four? There's definitely gonna be a Creed four. I'm hoping. Didn't Creed two end with him reconnecting with his son, Milo yeah. Ventimiglia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he's just off being a good dad to his son. That'd be nice. That make me feel good. Um, let's do. Uh, there's another one. Uh, Scream six. Uh, yeah. Listen, Roxy, listen. As I've said before, my wife and I did a rewatch of all the Scream movies before five. Liked all of them. Three, I think, is the weakest, but I was surprised at the resilience of the Scream franchise. I am a little concerned that we're doing this Scream movie so soon after the previous so, one. So soon. That's what I've been thinking, too. Like, you know, I I look to the main fans. I like Scream, the franchise, too. Yeah. But like, when Perry came on this mm -hmm. show and said that Scream was her second favorite movie of the year, or, <laughs> yeah. or her, maybe first. She might have said no, it was her favorite movie I of the year. I 
think it was second. I think it was second, second okay. but it was oh, yeah. very high. Very high. And I was like, what? That's amazing. Yeah. Um, what you can't do is maintain that quality if you pump out every year a screen movie. Yeah. So like, I think that it's okay. And hopefully this is good. And if it's good, then I'm going to feel so excited. I like the last one. And I think I'll probably like this one. I'm not like the die hard person they need to impress. Yeah. Cause I think my concern is that the, the meta uh, na- nature of scream, you know, the scream four was kind of like reboots or like belated sequels scream five. And there's like years between them. Scream five was like requels in that moment. It's like, well, I don't, things in the horror space haven't changed that much in a year. Um, so what are you going to be taught? Like, it's a different setting. It's in New York, but I don't know that that, which is cool, especially for me just having been in New York, but I don't know that that benefits that. I don't know. That's enough for a scream. Like, cause scream right. is talking about where horror movies are at in that time. Uh, so we'll see, but I am excited. The, the most of the cast from the previous films going back, plus including front of the show, Tony Revolori, Head and Pantieri's come back. I'm excited for it. I'm just nervous. Another movie I am, uh, so excited for is 65, uh, starring Adam yeah. Driver. Roxy, did you watch this trailer? Yeah. Um, mm, I'm excited. I, <laughs> I'm stoked for this too. I love a quiet place. Mm-hmm. Same writers. Um, yeah. I loved a quiet place one. I loved a quiet place two. I love, I love that franchise. I love Adam driver. I think he is the best working actor today. Yeah. I've loved him since girls. I like, I think he truly, truly is just the best. Yeah. And um, this looks really fucking good. Yep. Uh, it looks like a lot of, well, like a load of fun. Uh, I can't, I don't, I'm not going to say just watch the trailer or don't just go see it. The hook. It's a really good hook. Well, hopefully they nail it, but I, it's very much, up DJ's alley. Um, let's skip ahead a little bit. Let's go to Shazam, uh, Fury of the Gods. We've talked a little bit about this because, of course, it's this show. Of course, we have. Um, where oh, I've it's been, crazy I, how I've lost excitement for this movie. I don't understand. I love Shazam. Yeah. I I sat with Zachary Levi for an hour to support the Boys and Girls Club. We like went back and forth. He was fucking a doll to me yeah. and somehow some way somewhere amidst the vax stuff mm-hmm. the the jewish stuff the mm-hmm. uh the um trailer yeah the, the like just the things we've seen from Shazam somehow yeah i took a movie that i was stoked for and now feel nothing for it. Hopefully I still like this. I'm going in with very low expectations. Oh, and I didn't even mention, and the rebrand of all of DC. Yeah, yeah. I, it, I, I, I'm curious why I feel the way. It, because I don't think it's just... I actually think James Gunn had a really good response when people are like, well, you're going to ditch Zachary Levi because of this stuff. And he's like, listen, if I didn't work... If I, like, quote, unquote, whatever, fired, however you want to phrase it, fired everybody who had beliefs I didn't agree with, I wouldn't work with anybody. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's yeah. that's actually a really fair point. Like, just because they're saying stuff you don't necessarily agree with, like, that's just the nature of that's, you know, it's unreal. Because you wouldn't, uh, I think my thought process is you wouldn't want the reverse to happen. You wouldn't want somebody to be like, some anti-vax producer be like, this person believes in vaccines. I'm going to fire him. Like, the reverse would be bad. So doing it for things that align with your beliefs would also therefore be bad. You know what I mean? Um, and he's not doing, as far as I know, not doing crime stuff like Ezra Miller. Uh, yeah. But I guess, yeah, I guess it's just like, I don't care about, well, Helen Mirren's great. Lucy Lou, Lucy Lou's the other bad guy, right? Great. Fantastic. Yeah. Love both. I don't care. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's the nerd in me. Like, have him fight Mr. Mind. Uh, I wish Black Adam would show up, even though that was never going to be in the cards. Like, I don't know. Uh, same, same to you. Interest is waned. Not entirely sure why. But let me tell you something interest hasn't waned on. Coming out March 24th, John Wick Chapter 4. Yes, I'm excited. This is everything. This is everything. Everybody wants John Wick, including mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Am I excited that it's almost three hours? No. Uh, I think action movies and comedies benefit and horror movies benefit from being shorter because uh, yeah. there's a lot of. Really, it's only like war epics and Steven Spielberg movies that I'm like, give me give me that long run time, baby. <laughs> yeah, I think you can earn it. Yeah, I think I, for like I've been rewatching the Coen Brothers movies and I think the Coen Brothers are, are perhaps the greatest w- working filmmakers of their generation. And 
all of them are two hours or under <laughs> every single one of them. And it's like, yeah, you can do, you don't need this sprawl, whatever. Uh, I love this franchise. Um, I do think we might be wanting to wrap it up soon. I feel like there's, there's only so much oh, yeah. of this we can do. I don't know if four is supposed to be kind of the finish line, but you know, maybe, maybe start figuring out an escape an exit plan. We're already doing ballerina with Anadarmus, you know, the spinoffs. Like, so you don't think this, you don't feel this will be a, um, James Bond situation. Oh, I hope not. I feel like for me, it, it lends itself so specifically to Keanu Reeves's strengths. I guess you could, ah, I hope not. I hope not. I hope it's like a very specific Keanu Reeves vehicle and we don't, you could, I think your point is valid. You could do a James Bond where you kind of recast it, reboot it, but I don't want that, but it could do be you like the Bourne movies. I do. I do. I actually, I think, um, I, I like, I specifically like, um, two and three. Um, I didn't watch the Jeremy Renner spinoff and the fourth one was okay. Um, why do you ask? Cause I just kind of feel like, the Bourne movies fizzled out in a way that I hope that John Wick doesn't. As much as I did like those movies, I no. feel like it kind of like they lost their impact at some point. Yes. And and yeah, I think that if this movie kicks ass and they can find a way to have four killer movies for John Wick, that would be like the greatest surprise of the decade. Yeah. Yeah. I think like you come up with like a plan. We're going to do these. So those can be like the, the thing that stands on their own instead of like waiting for it to stop working. Right. Um, cause it, we know it can, there's been so many John Wick ripoffs that don't work that it's like, right. yeah, eventually John Wick's going to feel like one of these if you keep doing them. Um, I don't, I don't think it's like the fast movies where you can keep cranking them out. Cause even the fast movies, I think nine wasn't my favorite. I feel like they're kind of losing steam. Um, but, uh, I'm interested to you know your thoughts on this one, Roxy, March 31st. We got Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. I've had mixed feelings on what I've seen for this movie. Yeah, this is another movie that I was more excited for previously. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I actually didn't dislike the trailers. So uh, I'm going to come in with open mind, open heart, and thinking that tonally this is going to be goofy. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be okay with that. I've heard I've heard a lot of D&D &D fans, or at least the fans that I follow, be like, no, this feels like that kind of goofy tone feels like, you know, you're playing with a game with your friends and you're making those jokes. And it, listen, if it makes the D&D &D fans happy, I'm happy for them. Totally. I'm The trailers didn't get me hooked. I will say they released a clip that I actually thought was pretty cute uh, where they resurrect a dead body and they can only ask them five questions. And it's kind of like a cat classic Abin Costello kind of slapstick, you know, it just doesn't work out, right? Um, I think it'll be fine. The end. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, Roxy, did you know about uh, April 5th air? Were you aware of this movie before the Super Bowl trailer? Yes, but only because of all of the news that they were spending $7 million on the Super Bowl commercial. Oh, got it. That's, got it. that's when I was like, oh, what is this movie that is going to be $7 million in advertising that I don't know about that stars my two Boston boys mm -hmm. and uh, one of my favorite living actresses? Uh, I'm st stoked for this now. I am like, for better or worse, I am a diehard Ben Affleck stan. Mm -hmm. uh, I also love sports, as you know, and I am curious about this story about the um the nike pursuit of uh mj's shoes uh which... well, something that's weird about it i looked at the imdb i did not see somebody cast as michael jordan do you think we might not see a michael jordan in this movie like he might just like exist in the margins could be i mean because it'd be a tough let's be honest it'd be a tough it'd be a tough cast it'd be a tough um but it also like it's about him so that's I listen, the trailer was cool. Um, uh, and I think um uh Ben Affleck is a solid director and I liked The Way Back. Uh was that what, what it was called? The Way Back? Yeah, I really liked that movie. Yeah, so I'm I'm in I'm in listen, whenever Ben Affleck's on his comeback tours, his comeback tours tend to be pretty solid. Whenever he gets down for a little bit and he comes back, when he comes back, he comes back strong. So I'm excited about it. Um let's you we're we're gonna talk about uh, on the list, we've got April 7th. We got the Super Mario Brothers movie. I'm going to skip over that because, listen, we're going to talk about it. Um, uh, April 21st, 
Uh, well, before that, I got April 14th. All I want to say is I thought it was Rhinefield, and then I had to spell out the name, and it looks like it's Renfield. Renfield, uh, yeah. Whoops, uh, whoops on me. Uh, we got a new Evil Dead movie coming out April 21st, and it looks good. And I will say I don't think there's been a bad Evil Dead movie. I like oh, the cool. reboot. Uh, so I like these movies, and I'm excited to see it. And I think on the bridge between uh, spring, which is ostensibly what we're talking about in summer, our gateway into the summer is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 coming out May 5th. Roxy, do you think this is going to be the last Guardians movie? Kind of, yeah. Mm. Do you? I think they'll probably do... I, th- I think maybe they'll rebrand. They'll have a new cosmic team that's a different uh, thing. And I know in the comics, before the Guardians of the Galaxy, there was a team called Infinity Watch. I wouldn't be surprised if because we're, Adam Warlock was a key part of that team. We're introducing Adam War- Warlock in this movie. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the Guardians carry over into like an Infinity Watch movie led by Adam Warlock. But we're going to have yeah, some sort fun. of Guardians equivalent space yeah. team. And the characters will still be around in some way. But just the actors have been like, we're not doing Guardians without James Gunn. Yeah. I, essentially. Yeah, I think I people have been speculating like the whole team will die. I think... Kevin Feige is not going to let that happen because it's smarter to have them around if he needs them for something. Totally, totally. I do think we're probably not. I would be surprised if Drax, based on the way Dave Bautista, Dave Bautista has no fucks given, um, and based on the way he's talking, I would be surprised if Drax makes it out of this movie. Um, that's kind of it. I kind of feel like everybody else, like people, are like, "Will Rocket die? Rocket's not going to fucking die. No, no way." Um. I think everybody else is probably going to make it out fine, and then we'll find places for them where we need them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I agree. Uh, also, by the way, uh, in the comics, Drax is resurrected a lot as like androids and shit. So you could, Drax is oh, the cool. easiest one that you could get a new actor and resurrect it, or even like have them be a CGI creation and Dave Bautista voices them. There's ways to do it. I um, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We got some Discord. Uh, we asked the people in the Discord what they're looking forward to. Mike Joy said, the show I'm most looking forward to is Gotham Knights. The CW knows how to make quality superhero shows as of late. Uh, I totally want to see the teenage kids of Batman's villains team up with Batman's normal teenage son to solve Batman's murder. Just He says, just kidding. I'm looking forward to Succession the most. Um, and he says the movie he's most excited for is, the, is a tie between Ari Aster's latest, Bo is Afraid, and Renfield. Um, uh, Nathan, the man asks, is it cheating to say Barbie? Yes, it is cheating. That's summer. And we're talking about the spring, Nathan, the man. I'm so excited for Barbie. That's going to be out for my birthday. Uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer come out the same day. Which one do you think I'm most excited for? Oh, oh my God. You're lame with Oppenheimer. No, it's Barbie. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm excited oh, for yeah. Barbie. I'm very, listen, uh, uh, tenant. Oppenheimer's well, probably going to be great. Uh, it's probably going to be really good. The last few Nolan movies haven't really been my jam. Uh, and yeah, Barbie, I hear you. Barbie looks Barbie looks like a very unique experience that I'm very excited for. Me too. Um, Leonard Kim TV, Ted Lasso, Mandalorian, Shadow and Bone, Succession and Dave, movies, Dungeons and Dragons, Fast X, Super Mario Brothers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Little Mermaid. You slipped some summer movies in there, Leonard Kim. And then we're going to end with a question from Stessa Geta. What? Is your guys' most anticipated non-franchise release coming out this spring? Mine is Bo is Afraid. Anything Ari Aster does, I uh, am there. Opening night. So, Roxy, we've uh, outside of franchise stuff, what? Are you just talking about movies? I'm just double-checking the question. What? No, just what non-franchise release? It can be show. That so gives a lot prob- of options. Probably Succession. It's a. It is interesting with because I was going to say, but like multiple seasons, like no, but that's how shows work. That doesn't make it a franchise. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I guess like a franchise show would be any of the Marvel or, or even like, like uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Um, so Succession. Succession, great choice. I will watch it eventually. Listen, I'm going to start watching Succession. You all have convinced me. Is that from the same team that did Veep? Or yes um, or no? I don't know. That would be weird. Um, okay, hold on. For me, I'm going to say there's probably another answer. I'm going to be honest with you all because of what we do. I normally don't find out about like the non-franchise stuff until like a week before it releases. Like, oh, the Safety Brothers have a new movie? Well, this is my yeah, favorite yeah. movie of the year, but I didn't know yeah. about it until it was All in- of a sudden, an A24 email or Neon or something will yeah. come through and it's like, wait a second, what? Wait, wait, this is happening? This is my favorite movie. So I'm going to say this. 
uh, uh, Beyond Fest uh, tweeted out a tra- or tweeted out a trailer for a movie called Sisu that is about this like old Finnish miner that finds gold and on his way to take it back home he stopped this takes place during World War II he stopped by Nazis and then he proceeds to murder these Nazis in the most glorious fashion possible it looks fucking fantastic I retweeted it go check out Sisu uh, I think right now, non-franchise stuff, that's the one that, just watching the trailer, it looks fucking amazing. So that's the one I'm most excited for. Cool. There we go. Hopefully this guide helps you on your journey through the spring on what to watch. Roxy, uh, speaking of stuff they should be looking out for, what should they be looking out for from you? Well, you can find me everywhere at Roxy Stryer. And then also this Crust Indiegogo, it got funded fully within like two days. Hell They've yeah. been doing all of these stretch goals. The perks are insane. Um, I can't talk any th- spoilers right now, but I keep hearing different casting things that are happening and sh- things that are happening with the movie. And I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm in this movie. Good for them. They, they're, <laughs> doing, they're doing real good. They're doing yeah, they're, right now. They're doing real good. They're crushing right now. They're crushing. And um, yeah, it's just, yeah, I can't believe I'm in this movie. <laughs> Hell yeah. Go check that out. Go check out that Indiegogo. It has got 22 days left. Um, Give it some love. Uh, speaking of crowdfunding, oh my goodness, my comic, hellbentcomicbook.com, uh, third and final volume. I talked about it at the top. Please, 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 please go support it, please. Uh, we want to make this the best comic possible. I'm really excited to finish this saga, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So go check that out. And we'll see y'all next time.